Hey everybody, Dan here, and so today we're going to interview a buddy of mine, Lorenzo Parker from LP Lawn Care, and uh, this interview is going to take a little bit of a twist though. So uh, as the title and the thumbnail is going to clearly say uh, what this video is ultimately about, I kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on my buddy Lorenzo and uh, a little bit about his family and what he does for a living and what he does for his family. Uh, and then we'll move up, move along. So this is my buddy Lorenzo. Lorenzo, introduce yourself to YouTube. Uh, just let everybody know where you're from, how long you've been here. My name is Lorenzo. I'm from originally from Houston, Texas. I moved here from Savannah to from Houston, Savannah to help and take care of my grandma. But then I end up uh, meeting my wife here, and me and my wife been together for. 15 years, we've been married for 11, and I've been in Savannah since, I've been in Savannah since 2003. Wow, okay, I've been here since the summer of 2004. Came here from the Army, met my wife here, and ended up staying, just following up with the area. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a great area. Uh, so you met your wife here, yeah. you've been married to her for 11 years now. Yes, sir. You guys have had some difficult times of, as of late. Yes, sir. Uh, so, his wife actually uh, was diagnosed a few years back with end-stage renal disease. Basically, what that means is June 5th of this year, she had kidney transplant. Um, and she actually, just yesterday, went in for another treatment in Augusta. Yeah. Uh, and today's his first day back from Augusta after a couple days up there. That's a couple hours drive, about three hour drive, so I'm sure... Yeah. That wasn't a very comfortable ride back for her. No, I was up, there, was, up there, was up there for two days. Two days. She had a surgery. As soon as she had a surgery, uh, they released her from the hospital. We came straight home. Time to come home. You got came, a son? We had a son. I got my son and my niece that we were taking care of. Okay. So we came straight home. You got your hands full. Yep, I'm taking care of her. <laughs> you got trying your to, hands trying full. Trying to go to work, and I'm trying to take care of my son and my niece. Work. This man works for the city of Savannah, right? He's got LP lawn care, okay? He mows full-time. But he also works full-time for the city of Savannah in the tree department, right? Like, yes, he tr yes. trims back the trees, yes. overgrowth trees and brush and stuff like that. He's outside all day in this summer heat, all day long, and he comes home and he grabs his lawn trailer. Yeah. And it's the lawn trailer you guys remember, and I'll link to it up here. It's the red trailer that I put my ugly face on and, excuse me, and called it Dan's Lawn Care and Clickbait because it wasn't really my trailer, but I made the thumbnail look like it. Uh, we put the weed eater racks in it for him a few months back. And then just recently I did a video right here in my living room showing you guys how uh, to assemble a blower rack, which I got the blower rack idea from him he got the blower rack idea from Johnny from Blades of Grass. So Johnny had it first, and then he loved that blower rack. So we got a couple for him, assembled them, put them in his red trailer. I loved it. I bought one, and I put it in my open trailer. Um, but yeah, all day long, this guy's working for the city of Savannah. And then he turns around, and he comes home, and he hooks up to his red trailer, and he goes, and he mows. And he mows all the way up till dark. He's got to be, I mean, you're, the, you're like one of the hardest working men that I've ever met. And people on YouTube say that they wish they had half the energy I have. And I, I think to myself, after what you do all day long and then you hook up a trailer, and now I know why. It, his, it, his wife lost her income uh, with the, the end stage renal disease and the kidney transplant and the hospital bills. And, you know, insurance only covers so much and he's taking care of his kid. And so he had a side hustle, and he used to watch my side hustle videos. And I don't mean to overtake the conversation, but I know to keep the video a little bit short, no, no. I'm kind of just running with it, but he would watch my side hustle videos, and he realized on his own and with the help of his wife's you know, mentorship, he took his part-time side hustle lawn care business and grew it to a full-time business so he could supplement the income for his wife, what she lost now because she can't go back to work, even though she's okay now and is, and is expected to have a full recovery. Of course, there's gonna be some treatments and stuff going forward, but COVID-19's out there and she's incredibly high risk because of her 
kidney transplant yeah. and stuff. So she has to stay home for a while, take care of her, their son. How old's your son? Son 11. He's 11, so he's in school. So he's homeschooled right now because we're not in school, but and my niece is homeschooled. And the niece, so your your wife is handling that, yeah. and then you're in the city of Savannah mowing all day, yeah. or uh, trimming trees Please. all day, and then you come home oh, and you mow all yeah. day to make up that income. Yeah. So guys, from a side hustle to a full time, a lot of you guys will ask me. You say, "Hey Dan, how do I know when it's time to go from side hustle to making it full time?" Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes life throws it to you. Yeah. And then you do it uh, but now the purpose of this video isn't just to introduce you to Johnny but it's it, or to Johnny sorry mm -hmm. I can edit that mm -hmm. the purpose of this video isn't just to introduce you to Lorenzo yeah. um, but it's also to let you guys know something that happened over the past couple of days while he was in Augusta uh, so that big red shiny trailer that you just got lettered up and you mm. were expanding your business and doing so good so what happened was Thursday, I went out of town Thursday morning. Well, Thursday night, didn't know my trailers were getting stolen from the storage area that I keep my trailer secure and locked at. Yep. Along with many other lawn service companies as companies well. Companies that's, that's, that's there. And so this is a secured lot. Yeah. where you pay yeah. to have your trailer stored yes because in our hoa we can't have it in our driveway yes and it won't fit in your garage no so he pays a secure lot to have his trailer stored yes and tell him what what this morning what happened this morning i got up at five to go get uh, five thirty to go get my trailer on a saturday morning on a saturday morning i get there my trailer's gone so that had uh, to have been I was going to break down and cry. That had to have been the worst. I've been been building my business up for the last years. Years trying to get everything like I wanted and then it's just like soon I get everything like I wanted it get taken away from me. And I'm like when I when I found out it was gone, I was like I thought I was dreaming. Yeah. I know what you mean. I thought I was dreaming, so I was like, I was trying to wake my, I was slapping myself, trying to wake myself up, because I thought I was dreaming. So then when I looked, I was like, it's gone. I was like, I called the police, they came. I called the storage manager, he came. Wait, who'd you call first, the police or me? I called the police. Bastard. <laughs> Cause you called me early, man. Yeah, no, I, I saw you calling, and I, I was up, and I, I was like, "This can't be good." I called the police at five thirty this morning, about like five forty this morning. I called the police. Yeah. And then, and then after I got to calling the police, I went back outside the storage area, called the manager of the storage place to let him know, "Hey, uh, somebody had broken in uh, and stole my trailer." And the first thing out of his mouth was, this has never happened. Right. I said, well, it's a first time for everything. Right. I'm like, I had three locks on my trailer. Yep. A boot. Yep. I had a hitch lock. You guys remember that boot? He had, I think I showed you guys the boot um, in, the, in that video I linked to earlier. Uh, he had that big yellow boot. If anything... If I didn't show you it, then the drone video at the beginning of that video, the drone footage shows it up against my neighbor's fence where the trailer was parked in the driveway. He has that big yellow boot. I had a yellow boot. I had a hitch lock. And they just dragged that thing right out. I had the hitch lock. You no, know what it was when they came out, they had a flat tire. On because, the trailer? On the trailer because the boot busted the tire. Right. So once the it busted the tire, they was able to get the boot off off the trailer. Where's the boot? They took it with them. They took everything right. that was on the ground with them. So check this out. You say to yourselves, well, how did that happen? He's behind a secure gate. So we're not going to throw the storage company under the, under the bus here because everything is alleged. But allegedly, and we have a picture of the, of the man, um, what happened is this guy came in, knew that there was equipment being stored at this storage facility, probably not just him, but a lot of people. Um, 
And so with cash and a fake ID, he gained access by renting a unit. And he basically, he frauded the storage lot uh, with a fake ID and a $100 cash uh, down payment. He got a unit and he got the access code or he got to make an access code to get in the gate. Once he was in the gate, he got to pick whatever he want and closer to the gate, his big red beautiful trailer. And uh, they got it on video, like he said, with a flat tire being dragged out the gate uh, by a green explorer. No, by he came to get the unit with a green explorer. Oh. Well, when he came back to get my trailer, he had a white Ford truck. There it is. So the video cameras are working, as you can see, um, but it didn't matter. All the security in the world, guys, it's only as strong as the weakest link. Had a boot, he has the locks on the back door, he has the lock on the side door, he has the tongue, he pays for security, he stores it in a lot. The weakest link was the teller allowed somebody with a fake ID, not even a driver's license, and $100 to fill out an application. No background check, no vetting, and the guy gained access to everybody's uh, items that was there and they took his and the worst part about this is guys this this is the part where where we need to ask you for help because as we mentioned earlier you know his wife uh, with with the the a, e what is it e r kidney wait. disease yeah it's hard to as a kidney it, as a kidney it's disease e s r d ESRD is the acronym for the end stage renal disease. E and ESRD. She can't work. He literally built his business up since her diagnosis a few years back to supplement her income, knowing the worst was coming, uh, which was a surgery that was going to knock her out for a number of times. Yeah. He had to take care of his family. They own a house right around the corner. In fact, I, every time I open my garage, I could turn around and moon him in his glass door, <laughs> which I almost do a couple times. But yeah, we, we're that close. Um, right, right. I mean, I look right over there and see him. He's always working, if not on his house, his neighbors. And so this theft, it's not just a theft. They didn't just take his lawnmower. They took, they took his entire way of supplementing his wife's income. She doesn't get unemployment because it's not, you know, she doesn't get unemployment. Um, she doesn't get anything except hospital bills oh, yeah. and doctor bills and treatments and medication bills that, you know, you got to co-pay and stuff like that. Um, and so taking his equipment, they took his ability to support his family uh, above and beyond just his 40 hour um, city job so I set up a GoFundMe without him knowing and uh, he knows now I told him about it uh, but I talked to his wife and I talked to him about it and we got you know I got their permission to set up a GoFundMe um, so you know I'm asking if we can through my channel help him raise as much as we possibly can up to about 10 grand so we can get a walk behind and you know an edge or weed eater hedge trimmer but guys it's everything if you think man all I got is 10 bucks or 15 bucks to donate guys that 10 bucks or 15 bucks is weeder to line it's hand snips dude everything is gone everything is gone all the things that we accumulate in a lawn service over the years that makes it where we can work extra two cycle oil um, like I said hand snips safety glasses first aid kit everything is gone he has a how many accounts do you have? You have a lot. I have a lot. And I'm, and I, I, today, he has a full business. He goes out and does 17 yards with his nephew, which, by the way, he supports his nephew's household as well by employing his nephew, who helps with his income, putting money back into that home. Um, so now that family's out as well. So, I mean, guys, $5, $10, $15, those small little donations like that will add up to a lot because it's going to help him get things um, above and beyond just, you know, a mower. Uh, I put the first 50 in. 
Um, so we already got $50 in there toward it. And so I'm just asking if you guys can help donate. I'm going to link to the GoFundMe in the video description. I'm going to link to it in the comment section and pin it so it'll be the first thing. And um, I'm not sure if I can link to it up here, but I'm going to link to it up here. That GoFundMe, everything that we can raise, um, he'll be able to put right back in. And guys, the thing is, we're in a time crunch. It's September. We got September, October, and it's over. Um, November, December, hopefully you'll have some leaf cleanups and some fall cleanups. This was his last two months of work to put money aside for winter, for Christmas, you know, for his family. Um, now's not the time for him to go in debt in hawk um, trying to buy a small used mower or something to keep his business going. It's, it's going to snowball from here either downhill or uphill and I hope with your help we can get it snowballing downhill and take the stress off this guy uh, as quickly as possible. He's about the hardest working guy I ever met. Everything he does, he does for his family and, uh, and this, loss is, this loss is devastating. And it, things like this is what ripples through our community. Um, so I hope we catch this bastard. I hope they do too. Cause but it, it, moreover, I hope you guys can help uh, give a few dollars um, and share this, okay? If you can't, that's okay. Please share this. Share this video. Just send it up. Just say, hey, this guy could really use some help. And I trust Dan. I mean, I put my name on it. I've never done this in the five years I've been posting videos and so uh, I put my name on this my reputation behind this for sure and um, if you guys have any uh, if you are big channels and you have any way of helping with marketing with maybe you got an in with a company that can donate some equipment let me know please um, I'll go ahead and put my phone number in the comment section too don't use it to attaboy me Use it only for this particular purpose. If you got some information to share that can help us, help him, uh, that'll be great. So, Lorenzo. Thank you, Dan. Good luck. Thank you. We'll get this. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.